What's going on everybody? It's Frank from 5am Ramen here and I am in the city of Kurume in Fukuoka Prefecture. Now Kurume is actually the birthplace of tonkotsu or pork bone ramen. In other words, this is a super important ramen city. There are a lot of old ramen shops here and one of the places we'll be visiting, of course, is the place where Tonkotsu ramen started. Now the Tonkotsu ramen over here, it's on the heavier side, also the smellier side. However, there is a lot of variation here, so it really does depend on the shop. While a lot of it is heavy, there are some lighter styles too. I'm going to introduce a bunch of Kurume ramen shops to you and the first place I'm going to now is actually open early. It's actually 7 a.m. right now and I'm going to be having some heavy breakfast ramen. Let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to 5AM Ramen, your top source for all things ramen in Japan. I'm your noodle consuming host, Frank, and my middle name is Ramen. Well, it should be. This is the second episode in a big Kyushu ramen series. Japan's southern island of Kyushu has seven prefectures or states. In this series, we're focusing on Saga and Fukuoka prefectures. We were just in Saga for the local tonkotsu or pork bone ramen, which features raw egg as a topping. We've just moved over to Fukuoka though, where tonkotsu ramen is still king. Fukuoka Prefecture, after all, is the birthplace of tonkotsu ramen. As I mentioned, specifically, it's all said to have started in Kurume. Kurume is Fukuoka's third largest city after Fukuoka and Kitakyushu. Kurume doesn't get as much attention and foot traffic as Fukuoka or even Kitakyushu. But again, without Kurume, we likely wouldn't have tonkotsu ramen today. So I'm grabbing breakfast ramen at Maruboshi. Let's see where I'm at on the ground. All right, making my way over to the ramen shop, Maruboshi. And for reference, the characters for Maru and Boshi. Maru is basically sun, and Boshi is another way to read Hoshi or star. So the idea is that sun and the stars were basically open 24 hours. However, in current times, they have scaled back their hours a little bit, but still open from 7 a.m. on Sundays and I believe 9 a.m. every other day. I think the last time I had breakfast ramen was in Kitagata City, another important ramen city here in Japan. This should prove to be an experience. This might be the most popular ramen shop in all of Kurume City. Maruboshi unquestionably provides one of the coolest ramen experiences out there. You really get a sense of how in Kurume and in Fukuoka Prefecture and even Kyushu as a whole loves ramen. It's such a big part of life here. Let's get my full recap now. So, Maruboshi. Wow, that was an experience. The tonkotsu ramen itself, my god. 450 yen? That's less than $4 US. Insane. No wonder it's so popular. I arrived a bit after 7 and the place was packed. But they have a lot of seats, so it's not like there was a big lineup. I saw about three or four people lining up, but very quickly that line would disappear. They're a smooth oiled machine. And it's insane just watching them go to work, running around. I had to remind them because my ramen took a little bit longer, but they were apologetic and was very uh, Kyushu. They were like, gomenne, which is basically like, sorry, in a very casual way. And I, I, I didn't complain. I mean, it was only 10 minutes after I arrived. Now going back to the ramen, yeah, it's super simple. Gets the job done sort of ramen. There was nothing fancy about it. It was a heavier kurume style pork bone ramen, relatively thick soup, a lot of pork bones going in there, but pretty simple as were the noodles. These were thicker than Hakata style, picked up the soup nicely. Outside of that, you had very simple chashu pork, green negi, and if you like on the table, you can add beni shoga or red pickle ginger, which is what I did towards the end. That acidity from the red pickle ginger breaks up some of that rich broth. But again, more than the ramen itself, it was about the experience. You could just feel the history inside there. They've got photos on the wall from throughout their history. The old creaky cafeteria-like building that they're in. They call it senta in Japanese or center. That's really what it is. And you could just tell locals adore this place. I felt like I had to fully partake in the experience. That's why I ordered oden. You can basically choose on the ticket machine how many pieces of oden you want. I got two that are similar, but two that I usually get, two that I like, and they were tasty. A little bit of spicy mustard on the side too. And that's not all. There was a whole area there with pickled vegetables and what looked like some sort of potato meat dish. It looked kind of like nikujaga. And this is all part of 
what you get. It's crazy, all that for 450 yen. All in all, it's a magical experience at Maruboshi. So glad I went. All right, I'm now walking to ramen shop number two here in Kurume City. And the name of the ramen shop is Taiho. Taiho has a history too. It's been around since 1953. It actually started out as a food stall. And now they've grown to become arguably the most famous Kurume ramen shop. They have 12 plus branches here in Fukuoka, mostly in Kurume City. A very recognizable tonkotsu ramen brand. And they're a great example of kurume ramen. 100% pork bone soup and a heavier one at that. Another reason why kurume ramen is heavier is because of yobi modoshi. This is a key word I want you to remember. Yobi modoshi is a sort of ramen cooking technique here in kurume. And what it is, is that they keep adding to the same soup. It's almost like an aged pork bone soup. In other words, they don't clean the pot and just keep contributing to it. This is unique to kurume. And we have officially arrived at Taiho. Just like Maruboshi, it's a large ramen shop. You don't see ramen shops this big in Tokyo, unless you're in the outskirts. There are a couple ramen choices at Taiho. The prices are higher versus Maruboshi, but you do get bigger bowls. Still, super affordable though. Let's hear my full recap after Taiho. Okay, so here's my recap of Taiho ramen. I was a little torn when I arrived. I wasn't sure if to get their mukashi ramen or the regular ramen. Now the word mukashi basically means long ago. In other words, what they're aiming for with the mukashi ramen is a ramen you would get back in the day from yesteryear. Both choices feature yobi modoshi or that practice of constantly adding to the soup. Soup on top of soup on top of soup over and over for years and years. So I went for the mukashi ramen, which I think was a good choice. Seemed to be what people around me were ordering too and it was fantastic you know the pork bone soup did have this sort of aged almost fermented uh, quality to it however it didn't have this pungency that you might expect it was soft on the palate and even though they're going for a more classic ramen or something you get back in the day they definitely took a lot of time preparing this given that they've grown to have several branches i think as a company as a business they've carefully crafted their ramen soup so compared to maruboshi let's say they're both classic bowls this one felt more refined and carefully prepared you do pay more of course i paid 700 yen for the standard size or nami and they ask you how firm you want the noodles i went for kataman or basically firmer noodles. Toppings wise, pretty straightforward. I don't think it's necessarily the toppings that makes kurume ramen stand out. The pork chashu, for example, tends to be on the drier side of things. This wasn't super dry, but it was the case at Taiho Ramen. You had green negi for crunch and sweetness and uniquely bamboo shoots or memma. You don't see this that much in tonkotsu ramen. They also have a big space. They've got tables, they've got counter seats, but it's a newer, more modern space as well. Even though it looks a little classic on the inside, nothing like Maruboshi. Great bowl and even though this one was supposed to be classic too, quite a contrast with Maruboshi. That smoky aged soup was delicious and I would argue more refined. All right, I'm now on my way to the third ramen shop of the day, which is Nankin Senyo. This is actually where tonkotsu ramen was supposedly born. It all started here at this ramen shop. So this is somewhat of a ramen pilgrimage. Let's see what Nankin Senyo is all about. For everybody's reference, I've just released a big Fukuoka ramen guide. It includes info on 30 plus delicious ramen shops handpicked by me in Fukuoka Prefecture with a big number of them in Fukuoka City. You'll find thorough details about each of these 30 plus ramen shops, such as whether they have tables or just counter seating, or how rich their soup is, or how thick or thin they make their noodles. If you're planning a trip to Fukuoka, feel free to order this guide and do so with the promo code you see on screen for a special discount. Details in the description below. I'll be launching plenty more of these area ramen guides in the future too. All right, back to the ramen in Kurume, Fukuoka. Whew, it is hot out. I do a lot of walking on these ramen excursions and doing Saga City Ramen yesterday did a whole lot of walking, more than normal. It was to the point where I got back to the hotel and I was just so tired from the sun. I wanted to edit a video, but I just couldn't. I took a hot bath and went to bed. 
Anyways, feel free to have a look at that saga video as well. So, Nankin Senryo, the original tonkotsu ramen. Now, legend goes that this ramen actually started out as an accident. They left the pot on for too long, came back, and what happened to the pork bones was that they basically became part of the soup and that rich creaminess that is synonymous today with pork bone or tonkotsu ramen basically stuck and they said, let's keep this. That's how the legend goes. And it apparently all started at that place, Nankin Senryo. Cute interior, it's like an old Japanese home, random trinkets and memorabilia, statues included. And I was surprisingly the only person there. I was reading up on the reviews and a lot of people love it, but there are quite a few comments that say, this is not for me. And despite that, I expected on a Sunday, there will at least be some other customers around lunch, but I had the whole place myself. My interactions with the staff were pretty minimal. But besides the master chef who was cooking the ramen, cute old lady came over and gave me my ramen. Just melted my heart when that happened. Oh my god, finally some shade. Now the ramen at Nankin Senryo. The soup, in a weird way, it kind of reminded me of chicken soup, except with pork. It was quite light, almost watery. And maybe that's where some of the complaints arise, especially if you're really looking for that heavy kudume style bowl. But this is a piece of history. So in terms of flavor, it didn't really wow me per se. I think it was more the fact that I can say I've been to the original place where Tonkotsu Ramen started since 1937. And it's a cool environment on the inside as well. Getting back to the ramen, it also kind of did remind of a champon because the person that started the shop did come from Nagasaki. Nagasaki champon is their local noodle dish that's most popular, so that would make sense. This one, it didn't really come across as a tonkotsu ramen, at least tonkotsu ramen as we know it. Maybe this is what it was really like way back in the day. And some of the other comments feel like they're riding that wave a little bit too much with their signage. They're saying, hey, this is where it all started. This doesn't bother me. Ride the wave. Why not? And it's not like they're pricing the ramen at a crazy price point. It's only 550 for that bowl. So I'm happy I went. And last things about the ramen, the noodles were thicker than you'd normally get, even for kudume, which is a little bit thicker than, say, Hakata-style tonkotsu ramen. And the noodles were also curly, something you don't normally see in tonkotsu ramen. And even though the noodles were very different at Taiho, the previous ramen shop, both Taiho and Nankin Senyo had noodles that were less dry, like Hakata ramen. These were more moist, more water in them. In summary, a big piece of tonkotsu ramen history. Now I'm gonna find some shade. I think I'm gonna find a coffee shop before getting my next bowl, which is going to be what might be the stinkiest, heaviest kurume ramen shop. I think I need a little breather before that though. And it is hot, my God. I'm trying desperately to find shade but not being so successful. So I did end up taking a little breather, finding shade at a sweet shop called Ishimura. They had some tables in the back, and there I had a cup of coffee and a peach jelly dessert. A refreshing snack it was. Yeah. Anyways, back to ramen. I'm visiting Honda's flagship shop. Honda has a couple other shops, not a lot, but a few here and there. Anyways, here is my recap of Honda's kurume style tonkotsu ramen, the final bowl for today. Okay, bowl number four in Kurume at Honda Shoten. This, to me, before having visited Kurume, was kind of how I thought Kurume ramen would be. Stinky, you can smell it a block away, that pork bone funk, and also on the heavier side. But as I've hopefully introduced with some of the other ramen shops, Kurume ramen, it is pretty diverse. There are shops, of course, that do the heavy style. And if not heavy, the yobi modoshi technique will lend to a stronger age sort of flavor. But yes, Honda Shoten was definitely the heaviest of the four. But it didn't punch me as hard in the face as I would have thought. It was heavy, of course, because it was the fourth bowl. Quite thick of a soup and a strong porky flavor. Yeah, with the soup, I would say they're not bashful. They embrace that porkiness at Honda Shoten. Whereas at Taiho, they're of course embracing that porkiness, the yobi modoshi. But Taiho, the way they present it, is a little bit more gentle. Whereas at Honda, it's a little bit rougher, more in your face. And that's intentional, I feel like. I was also a little bit unsure about what to order. There were three choices there for ramen. And I decided I should get the closest thing to a kurume style ramen. And that's what I got, jun aji. So in a way, the jun aji ramen at Honda Shoten 
was kind of like Taiho Ramen's Mukashi Ramen, in that they were going for something more true to the roots of Kurume Ramen. However, Honda does take a kind of modern approach because they had soft boiled egg in there, not hard boiled, and the chashu pork slices were definitely softer and not dry, as you often see here in Kurume. So that was a refreshing and tasty treat. You can also customize the firmness of your noodles, and I got katamen again, or firmer noodles, firm noodles, let's say. Good quality noodles, proper bite to them. And it's nice when I can request firmer noodles, just because by the time I'm taking photos and video, the noodles can get a little bit soggy. I'm pretty quick though with those photos and videos. So in conclusion, a tasty bowl of kurume ramen, a great example of yogurt Modoshi with some modern touches and let's say a ramen restaurant that is fully embracing a stereotypically porky and even smelly kurume style ramen at Honda Shoten. And there you have it, the finest ramen in Kurume City, one of Japan's most historically significant ramen cities, Tonkotsu Ramen Territory. I hope you found this video both educational and also fun. If that's the case, please hit that like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. It's crazy, I'm gonna have to come back here. There's just too much ramen to be had in Kurume. You can't argue that once you've had one bowl, you've really gotten already a sense of what Kurume ramen is like. And while that is the case, there are similarities between each of the bowls, as I hope I've highlighted in this video, there are subtle differences too. I'm just gonna have to come back and do this city again. It might not be for a little while, but as a ramen collector, I wanna scratch those places off my Kurume ramen list as well. Thanks again for watching. Frank from 5am Ramen signing out. It's funny how I mentioned that it would be nice to get back to Kurume because I do end up back in Kurume at one point on the trip. But for the next episode, we're off to Fukuoka City and controversially, we'll be eating non-tonkotsu ramen at a famous spot there. Yes, non-porkbone ramen in porkbone ramen country. What's this channel come to? See you in the next episode.